Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Tutorials in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I am going to talk about single stage to orbit space planes. Now I previously did a video on an Atlas single stage to orbit system. That's just a rocket launching vertically getting to orbit and that's reasonably easy as long as you have lightweight tanks. Actually the whole theme of the video is going to be as long as you have lightweight tanks. Uh, so but that's doable. The problem with doing it as a rocket, vertical launch rocket without wings, is that it's harder to bring it back down. You probably don't have the heat shielding if the tanks are lights and everything. So when you put the wings on and you put the heat tiles on, it gets heavier. In the Atlas STO, SSTO, I used a kerosene oxygen engine, Merlin's or NK9, NK9s I think it was, not NK9Vs. And that's doable because we were only going up and not coming back down. If we want to go up and come back down, we pretty much have to use, as an SSTO, we pretty much have to use hydrogen oxygen as the fuel mixture. I have added two mods to this install. This is still the base install. This is not the one I did in the recent video, not the historical install. This is just uh, the one that we've been working off of, but I added two new mods. One is B9 Aerospace, and the other is AJE Extended. I'll link these in the video description. AJE Extended uh, adds more engines, more air breathing engines primarily, and B9 Aerospace adds a whole lot of new parts. But not all of those parts are configured properly. Uh, so uh, you saw the engine list, look at all these engines. By the way, they say non-RO, but they're not non-RO exactly. They just aren't supported by RO, but if you take a look, these stats are advanced jet engine stats. That's not what you normally see in Kerbal Space Program. And you also see that's using kerosene. That's a dead giveaway. That's real fuels. So it's, it's good enough. It may not be perfect. Maybe it needs to be resized a little bit, these engines, but they'll do for now. Uh, actually, we'll probably be using... I mean, potentially use like uh, the SR-71 engines, which are somewhere uh, here. That's a SR-71 engine. So that one will be fine anyway. Okay, so the B9 parts. Well, unfortunately, it's unfortunate because we would like to use some of these cockpits. This one actually is probably okay. but And maybe we'll use that one. But taking a look at these cockpits here, like this Mark V cockpit. Well, that's too small. Uh, whoops. This is the shuttle, stock shuttle cockpit. So, realism overhaul increases the size of the cockpits by a factor of 1.72222, or 1.6, I think. The shuttle cockpit's 1.6, and the Mark II cockpit's at 1.722. Uh, so there's a Mark II cockpit for comparison. It's obvious that this one's way too small. And the same is true of this B9 Mark II cockpit, as well as uh, some of the other ones in here. I love this S2 reusable, oops, S2 reusable pod and the hexagonal form factor, but that's too small. And same with this hypersonic front section. If you take a look at the other cockpits, by the way, they also have another problem with them, and that's that they have two of the modular fuel tanks and two MLI layers, which goes with the modular fuel tanks. So uh, they have a serious configuration problem. It looks like two things are trying to configure them. Now with the B9 uh, parts, they come with their own sort of tank form factor. You can see I've typed HL here because I was planning to use this HL cockpit and it has HL tanks, this universal body and has yeah, this nifty HL side adapter and that allows you to attach these tanks. So it's a whole thing. I like these conformal tanks. Um, they can, you know, increase your fuel capacity very nicely. But the question is whether or not these tanks are sufficiently efficient, whether they have a low enough dry mass to allow us to make an SSTO. And the the limit that we're looking for is the dry mass definitely cannot be more than 10% of the wet mass. At that point, it's just horrible. Um, we want to stick to structural here. I don't think... 
I, that might just make it look different. I don't think it changes the contents. Uh, you can change it to a round form factor if you want one, but I don't think we want one. The flat side will do just fine. And yeah, so we need an engine to put, and I said we were going to use Hydrolox, almost certainly. Uh, so hydrogen and oxygen engine. And so we'll start off, we won't pull any punches, we will start off with RS-25, the space shuttle main engine. Um, probably the most useful engine in this sort of situation. The other option is the engine from Energia, which is the RD-0120, which is sort of the SSME of the Soviet Union. <laughs> so. Uh, if you'd like to think of it that way, uh, there it is. So that's 3.45 tons, gives you 1,961 kilonewtons. The SSME is uh, a little bit heavier than that, but can give you more thrust. So it ends up being about the same thrust to weight ratio and efficiency. Uh, so it's your pick, basically. Yeah, they're pretty much interchangeable. So... We can fill up the tank and we can get a sense of the size that we need. Uh, first of all, we can check that the dry mass is less than 10% the wet mass. So just move the decimal point over. So we're looking that looking for it to be less than 1.38 tons and it is, so it's a good tank. Uh, it will allow us to have some payload capacity, hopefully. But, you know, it's not Atlas level. That It's not a balloon tank. Uh, those would be lighter. Let's actually see that. Fill it up with the same fuel, and you can see 1.4 tons on 2.987. That's about a 5%. Uh, so if it was 10%, it'd be 2.98. So it's 5%. This isn't at 5%. This is probably 6, 7-ish. So anyway, the one thing we wanted to avoid was this shielded tank which you probably saw on my carrier plane in the space plane tutorial. And if we fill this up, that's more than 10%. So that was what was causing our space planes problems. So that would not work. We do have to check that these parts are properly shielded. And the answer is they're shielded well enough. Two point, uh, sorry, 2,500 Kelvin skin temp. The internal temp is not wonderful, but hopefully it'll do okay. We'll see. I don't know if that causes any problems, but so far so good. This is our choice. So check the temperature tolerances, check the dry ratio on your tanks, and then we can proceed uh, to build it. We've got some cargo bays in this form factor. We won't overdo it. We'll place it in the middle, and then we're going to place more fuel and more fuel. Okay, and maybe there's this uh, adapter that we can make it look a little bit better on the tail here. Like that. Oop. Okay, so that's a good start. Let's get all the tanks filled. And we end up with about 9,000 meters per second. So what's the big problem with making a space plane, an SSTO space plane for, uh, for realism overhaul? In stock Kerbal Space Program, it's easy. I mean, it's uh, a nice, fun, relaxing thing to do, uh, if you will. But that's because the amount of velocity that you get from the air breathing engines is 1,500 meters per second, roughly and you only need another 800 on the rocket engine to make orbit. The orbital velocity is 2,300 around Kerbin in the stock game. For realism overhaul, you still get potentially the 1,500 meters per second from the air breathing engine, and that's all very nice, but orbital velocity is 7,800 meters per second. So you need 6,300 from the rocket engine, which is 80%. Now you can see we're packing 9,000 here at the start, but we haven't put the wings, we haven't put the jet engines, we haven't put the jet fuel, uh, so and we don't have any payload. So we are looking towards all of that right now. Thrust weight ratio is good with the SSME, which is why it is a nice engine to pick here, though not the only option. So 
There are two basic options for your engines. You've got the SSME plus jet engine version or you've got the Saber engine. And there's another reason why you need to install B9 Aerospace as well as advanced jet engines. Otherwise, these will not be here or will not be configured properly. So the Sabre engines uh, have an air breathing mode and a hydrogen oxygen mode. That's like the rapier engines in stock, except in realism overhaul, the rapier engines, they are methane engines. So they probably will not give us the efficiency that we're looking for in order to go fast. Uh, so we will be using the Sabre engines instead because they use the hydrogen oxygen fuel mixture and the downside to the Sabre engines, you know, why don't I just use the Sabre engines then? They are going to have the hydrogen oxygen. They have a nice efficiency at vacuum 460 uh, compared to the SSMEs 455. Well, the problem is thrust to weight ratio. The SSME, the RS25 D E has 2,320 kilonewtons in vacuum here for a mass of uh, 3.5 tons. So you take the 2320 divide by 9.81 to convert to tons, and then divide by the mass of the engine, and you get a thrust weight ratio of 67. Take a look at the Sabre engine. It's got a thrust of 500 here, divide by 9.81, and then divide by the 1.75 ton mass there. It's got a thrust weight ratio of 29, and that's before you add in the intake and the pre-cooler. Uh, which are obviously additional masses. There is the larger sized version, the M size, that's seven tons. And if we take the 2000 kilonewtons, still less thrust than the, uh, the spatial main engine. And we try and get its thrust to weight ratio. We find that it's at 29 as well. So it's the Space Shuttle main engines have doubled the thrust to weight ratio of the Sabre engines. Is it worth it? Well, let's find some jet engines to complement the SSME, because we're probably not wanting to get off the runway with the SSME. The reason for that is getting off the runway actually takes a lot of time. And, you know, even if it's... Uh, if you take a look at a burn time of 3 minutes and 36 seconds, even if it takes 20 seconds, that's like 10% of our fuel. So getting off the runway is no joke. Let's say we were going to use the SR-71's engines so that we could get to Mach 3 and everything. So uh, these are SR-71 engines, okay. But note its mass, 2.7 tons for one, and we have two of them. 2.7 tons, this SSME is only 3.5. So maybe you notice what happened to our Delta V. If we take these off, 9,000. Put these on, 7,900. We lost 1,000 meters per second. So maybe the Saber engines are worth it. It's, it's a sort of balance. Because, I mean, you could say the Saber engines are worth it, but you're going to need more of them to make up the thrust of the SSME. Well, the Saber M you can manage uh, to balance out the SSME. So maybe we'll go with that. But I think you're going to have to balance this one out and see. Well, it's on air breathing mode. Okay, it's 8,410 meters per second in vacuum mode. And we'll probably still want the intakes and pre-coolers. Uh, well, there's no great place to put the single air intake, is there? But right now, we've already got enough to get a picture. It's 8,000 meters per second. It's basically the same as what we'd have with the SSME and the SR-71 engines. But the SR-71 engines don't get a whole lot of thrust. They get... I mean, that's weird to say. SR-71, you think, well, it has a lot of thrust. But if we take a look at it... On its own and add the uh, kerosene in we see a thrust weight ratio of 0.23 the SR-71 got a thrust weight ratio of 0.4 or so off the ground and so we're just playing heavier and that's why we're not getting that much so we'll need possibly to put another set here now we get the 0.4 
And now we're down to 7,000 meters per second up there. So... Yeah, that's getting a little bit tight and suggesting that the Sabre engine would probably be a better deal. Okay, so contemplating this, I think for this size craft, we will go with the Sabre engines, after all. 0.77, yeah, we're probably gonna need four of these. So just in case people don't know, the Sabre engines are meant for a single stage to orbit space plane called Skylon. And probably Skylon has, e has even better tanks than what we have here because it is expecting to take substantial payload to low Earth orbit. Whereas we may barely get some payload capacity out of this, we'll see. Anyway, we've got the air intakes, pre-coolers, and engines. And right now they are in closed cycle mode and produce 7,800 meters per second in closed cycle mode. That doesn't seem like a whole lot. Need area is 0.6. This provides 0.9, so the air intake should be adequate. That'll be enough to get off the ground, provided we give it enough wing. And right now our center of mass is here. Let me build up a wing, and then we'll further analyze this situation. Okay, so this is very much a game of seeing how little wing we can put on and still have it get off the runway, basically. And so I've got a little canard here for um, pitch authority because otherwise uh, these elevons are really close to the center of lift and that's the only reason that's up there. We could probably make it a little bit bigger given where the center of lift is right now. Uh, thankfully the Sabre engines are properly heat shielded so we don't have any problems with that right now. I've got an extra tank here that's a shielded procedural to put some extra hydrogen but we probably need to change the mix of hydrogen and oxygen because they'll be running just on hydrogen at the start so we're probably carrying uh, too much oxygen. Uh, unfortunately we can't put oxygen in the wing. They've limited this to kerosene and avgas. Uh, although, I guess we could change the wing fuel tank type. I don't know if that hurts its, uh, well, that's not a whole lot of liters, is it? Um, yeah, I mean, it doesn't seem worth it with only 99 liters in there. Uh, so right now the wing mass is 2.77 tons for that piece, and then another 0.68 tons for that piece. That's, I mean, heavier than the large tanks here. There's a 2.4 ton tank here and there's no one there so it is a huge contribution to the mass and i didn't even get to the control surfaces uh, which are their own little mass and of course the vertical stabilizer vertical stabilizer probably doesn't need a mass strength of that much so we could tune that based on what we think is reasonable there uh, but we now need to turn to the landing here so this is just an estimate a guesstimate uh, based on prior experience and seeing other planes. We'll see how it goes. It's very little wing, but you know, I've seen planes lift off with less wing. Uh, we do have the B9 landing gear here, but I'll avoid that for now and keep things simple. Uh, we will just go with the stock landing gear and rescale and hopefully, tweak scale I mean, and hopefully we'll end up, okay, uh, maybe I need hangar extender in here these days. I haven't got that in here yet. That's obviously not going to be big enough. But the bigger we make it, the heavier it's going to be. It actually says max safe load here. So I guess that's a good good measure. We want it to be safely above what we've got. So that seems okay. So it seems like the delta V for the air breathing is less than that for the rocket mode because it's treating the oxygen as payload capacity. Uh, payload, so... That makes sense. We don't have a whole lot of delta V anymore after adding the wing. I think it's just like 6,000. So we're probably not going to get to orbit like this. And we will need to take a few more, need to make a few more adjustments to uh, get it to happen and probably add a lot more fuel. We can increase the utilization here, but first we have to check whether we can get off the ground with the mass that we've got. So, let's take a look at FAR. <laughs> I have not taken a look at FAR yet. Okay, um, this is Pitch Authority. 
So we don't have enough wing. I think is what it's trying to tell me there. I'm going to try and increase the canard a bit. Okay, that, make, that made things worse. Hold on. If I take it off, does that help? It does. Really? Because that seems like a pretty big gap. Let me see Mach 1. Okay, well... If it's seriously happier without the canard, I'll put a horizontal stabilizer then. That angle of attack that we need is worrying. I've already configured the control surfaces to do what they're supposed to do, but maybe we should have some flaps. So the way to configure flaps, these guys, um, I usually use action group 7 and 6, so increase flap deflection and 6 to decrease. And that's because in flight sim, F7 used to be for or still is for increasing flaps and F6 for decreasing flaps. So just a flight sim remnant and activate the flaps there. 15 degrees might be enough. If the elevons were all the way back over here, I probably wouldn't configure them as flaps, but they're actually, you know, reasonably far forward. So we'll try it. Okay, well, Last thing is to make sure that Action Group 1 is set to toggle the mode on the engines. And let's see if anything goes wrong in terms of the configuration of the parts, right? Because B9 Aerospace, is it configured properly for realism overall? It seems to be, but let's find out. Okay. It definitely looks like it doesn't have much wing, huh? Well, we'll see how it works out for us. Thrall is up. Atmospheric autopilot we probably want now. Throttle up, throttle up. Oh, um, is it reading a different throttle? What? Why is it only going half throttle? Hmm, peculiar. Okay, ignition. You can see the prodigious liquid hydrogen burn rate. Also boil off of the oxygen there, which is why we used cryogenic tanks and put MLI layers and everything. Okay, we need to avoid scraping the tail and everything. Let me put some flaps on. Should have done that earlier. Okay, running out of runway. Rotating. Uh, okay, rotate, rotate, emergency, rotate. Oh, we're going down. We're going down. Oh, no. Uh, it's close. Oh, 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 don't roll. We're going up. <laughs> okay, we may need a longer runway. We we need to go very fast in order to start going up, it looks like. So, I didn't put enough wing, I don't think. Or you can say barely enough wing. Barely enough. So let's see, the thrust is 150, as was advertised, and this is again pulse in air breathing mode, 3300 right now. Oh, we're losing thrust as we head up. I don't know if these pre coolers actually do anything useful. These Sabre engines don't seem to operate like the rapiers in terms of increasing thrust as we increase speed and the speed of the intake air, but we'll we'll get a little bit faster and then judge that. To actually go to Mach 5, I mean these might be able to, but the rapiers or ramjets might be helpful for that. But ramjets can't work on their own, they need jet engines first, so then you end up with three different types of engines. The regular jets, the ramjets, and then the, the rocket engines. Well, efficiency is going up, that's nice. We're gonna need a lot more volume 
That's the trouble with liquid hydrogen, it takes up a lot of volume. Maybe methane is feasible just because of that? Tough to say. Okay, let's see if we can break the speed of sound now. Our thrust is increasing. Well, we're actually going down though. I'll leave it here. We'll see what happens. This is going to be a test run. I'm not going to try and land it or anything. No, that's not accelerating well enough. Right now, I think we'll just be gauging the rate, uh, the saber performance. So I'm going to go into jet mode temporarily to lighten up the oxygen load. And I'll, of course, make sure that this works out. So we're getting nearly the... 500 kilonewtons we were expecting. Specific impulse is climbing, but it's not at its maximum of 460. Okay, let's see how the rape. Uh, sorry, I keep saying rapiers. The sabers do now in everything. Okay, well, the thrust can't sustain that kind of pitch. They aren't quite. Yeah, I mean, it's not really doing the pushing us very fast deal. We're losing Mach number here. No, this is clearly not going to be good enough. We could find a way to lighten up the plane. We could add more engine power. But that adds mass, obviously, so... We'd have to weigh that carefully. Yeah, this isn't looking like it's good enough right now. We clearly need more lift at the start, so that's another thing. That's what our wing platform looks like right now. Uh, well, anyway, I will contemplate these things and leave this as a first test, but you get the picture as far as what we need to do and it's just a matter of tweaking and trying to get the balance right so I will produce uh, more videos about my efforts to make an SSTO we may scale this up quite a lot that might help if we go to the Saber M's instead of these Saber S's and just have two Saber M's which are heavy but we won't have thrust problems we'll need a bigger wing though I'll look into that uh, give me your thoughts as well. Maybe you would like to see the SSME jet engine combination. We could try that out. Alright, so with this I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.